All right, girls. Here we are. We're on our last class of uh, sewing clothes. Um, I think our the next sewing class we're going to do is we're just going to make a project in class. And then that's going to be it. It's probably going to be it for good. Um, I don't think I'll teach this class next year if I do go back to co-op. Uh, we've been doing it for three years, and I think y'all are kind of burnt out. So I don't think we're going to progress any further. Uh, the only way I might would teach it again is if there was enough girls that new girls that wanted to start over from scratch from where we started uh, three years ago so anyways so y'all try to do good on this because it's this probably be our last one and hopefully it's something you can wear now we're making a skirt pattern and this is called i told y'all it was called a mermaid bottom uh, it's also <coughs> called a fishtail bottom and it's a gives a little bit of an elegant um kick to, we're, we're doing it simple as in we're just doing at the top we're just going to be doing elastic waist which is a little less formal uh, so just having sort of a plain Jane skirt that's why I wanted to do a little bit of interest with it so this is the pattern I gave you and it, it'll be panels you'll cut out how many panels you need for this size now there's a big discrepancy here with this panel this panel is approximately like eight and a half inches wide so if you cut out four of them that's going to make about a lady size three or a little girl size 14. if you cut out five panels that's going to make about a lady size six eight and if you cut out six panels that's going to make about us a lady size 12 or 14. so that's a big jump in between the sizes and if you're using a slinky fabric that's okay because it will just sort of hang down to your figure and it'll look all right but if you use something that has a little bit of stiffness to it it's going to stand away from your body so if you're in between these sizes like let's say um, if you're a 10 and you're going to fall in between six panels and five panels you may not like the way it looks on you because it may look bunchy it may look too big so what i suggest to make this nice and form fitting we don't want it to be so tight that it's indecent but just a little bit form fitting so that none of us feel fat in it uh, i suggest that you measure around where's my measuring tape the widest part of your body which is usually going to be across your hips across your rear end um just measure sort of around your stomach around your hips and just see which one's the widest but find the widest measurement okay so i just want to um talk about <clears throat> how you find out how wide to make your panel um so let's say you measure around the widest part of you which is around your hips your rear whichever is the widest point and let's say that you're 36 inches around it's gonna write 36 inches there and then you want to do you choose how many panels you want to do you say well i want a skirt with plenty of flounce so i want to do six panels so you're going to take that 36 and divide it by six which is obviously six so 36 divided by six is six so you want your panels to be six inches wide but then you've got to add however much because you're going to have a seam on both sides so you're going to lose some fabric so let's say you make a half inch seam on each side that's an inch so you got to add an inch for your seam allowances so you need your panels to be seven inches wide and that since this was an eight and a half inch panel i just took the middle and made a little fold in the middle to make my panel skinnier because it was eight and a half inches wide and that when i made it it came out a little big so i wanted to shrink it down a little bit so that's what i suggest you do uh if if you do yours and you it says you need a six inch panel then you're going to fold yours over even more in the middle and you're going to make your panel skinnier so you can do that measure across or since hey this is your pattern you can cut it and just cut it down to whatever size you need don't forget to allow at least a half inch five eighths of an inch preferably per panel to make it to allow for seams because you're going to be using up that much material every time you make a seam okay now here's another thing you can do you can make you can lengthen this if you want it to go to the floor 
or if you're some of you younger girls obviously you're not going to want it's already going to go to the floor if you cut out this entire panel so you may want to make your short or you older girls may might want to make your short so just fold it down um to the length you want it be sure to remember that you're going to lose an inch and a half up here for the um the elastic and you're going to lose an inch down here for the hem so make sure you allow for that so you're going to lose about another two and a half inches so if you fold it like this and then after it all gets sewed up it's two and a half inches shorter and that's too short on you then you'll have to add a ruffle or or wear tights with it or leggings or something all right so i cut out six panels and like i said i folded mine in the middle to make my panels just slightly smaller and I will admit, the more panels you do, the more flounce it has at the bottom. Um, here's one that we did in class, the blue jean one. Remember that? Let me see if I can zoom back so we can see this. Um, hmm. Let me turn it and get further away here. All right, here's the um, blue jean one that we made. And I can't figure out how to get in front of the camera. I don't know if you can see or not, but it has a little bit of flounce at the bottom. And this one was five panels, and uh, which come out to about a size six or eight um, after it was sewn. And here's the elastic we put at the bottom. So see, it gives a little bit of flounce at the bottom. This is five panels, so that's why I wanted to do mine with six panels because I want it. I like it really flouncy. It gives a feminine look. Uh, four panels is not going to be a lot of flounce at all, but it's going to be a shorter skirt. It's going to look more like that. So, you know, it's still going to be okay. Um, but, you know, if you had wanted to take the time to do eight or ten panels, you could do a really pretty skirt. Okay. Now, when you sew these together, you can also alter your shape on your pattern, your fishtail. You can make it curve out more. You can uh, make it curve out less. Um, just alter it however you want. Look on Pinterest. You can see some really cool <laughs> fishtail skirts. Uh, this one right here, I actually let it sew to a point, which I love um, uneven hems on skirts. However, I, I did it with a cotton and so this cotton doesn't have a lot of give to it. It's kind of stiff. And I've already washed it to see if it would relax some. So I wasn't really crazy about the way this looked. It's just not flattering the way it hangs. It's kind of stiff. So I'm probably going to go back and cut the point off on this uh, and make it more rounded. Because when we sew these together, it is going to make kind of a point And then we've got to round it to, to give it a soft flow. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, let me turn my camera back around is we're going to just put a panel face two good sides together and we're going to sew it on one side then we're going to open it up and we're going to get another panel put it face down sew it on one side open it up we're going to keep doing that until we have all six of these panels uh, sewed together and it's going to be like a long sheet and uh, I'll show you what we got. I'll do that and then come back. Okay, so here I've sewed <clears throat> all of my panels together. So I've got this long row of panels that have this detail down at the bottom. The fishtail, as they call it. So now we take and meet the two sides together. Still making sure good sides are facing each other and we attach those last two together and that makes a circle and you can already see that it's coming together and it's starting to make a skirt so let me sew that side together just like i've just been you can just put a couple pins um making sure your shapes match up because there is a shape to this so just sort of make sure that curve right there matches up in your panels that's the main thing. Don't worry about the top or the bottom because we can cut that off and get that all even later. Okay, so I'm going to sew these two sides together and we've got a skirt formed. 
and then we're gonna start working on so see our pretty much our pattern is done our skirt is formed we're just working on we're going to be hemming it putting in the top um, finishing the edges these seams and then I'm going to show you some options that we can do so once again uh, since I only allowed a half inch extra for each panel I'm just got my foot right along the edge of the fabric and I'm sewing it so that's why I'm only using up about ha a half of an inch um, but if you make a big wide seam you, need, you might need to allow three quarters of an inch for your seam you just it can be too big and you can make it smaller but if it's too little the only thing you're going to be able to do is to add another panel in there okay so when you get to this point where it pretty much makes a skirt we've pretty much got now you want to put it on and make sure that it's the right size if it feels way too big uh, and obviously it's going to be big in the waist because we're going to put the elastic together it but if it feels way too big across the widest part of you uh, then you can go back and make your seams a little bit bigger so i'm going to come try my uh try mine on and uh well so i don't have to cut the video off I'll go ahead and show you what we're going to do next see how you've got this raw where we sewed this together especially with this fabric i'm using because it's a silky fabric it is fraying really bad but anything that you're going to wash a lot it has to be sealed on the edges or it will just fray until it gets all the way into your seam and comes apart let me show you on the denim skirt we did in class what you're going to have to do is zigzag this you're going to go to each one of these seams and zigzag it all the way down zigzag them and that's what we did in class And I showed you. <coughs> well, no, I didn't the denim because uh, denim will stop fraying after it reaches a certain point. And I washed this and I've already trimmed it. But right here we did at the top. I told you to zigzag the edge and then I washed it and it this and then I went and cut all the strings off. So for denim, it's pretty much gonna stop. Uh, but for something like this, a cotton, um, but especially if it's silky, it will fray really bad. Now with this one, what I did was I surged all the edges because I have a serger and that's the cheating way to do it. It's fast and easy. It makes perfectly seals the edge. But if you don't have a serger, just zigzag it. So I'm going to try this on and take it up or let it out depending on how I feel. And then I'm going to seal all my edges, zigzag or serge your edges, and then we'll be back to go on to the next step. Okay, <clears throat> so I've I tried it on and it was a little too tight, so I went back and took out three or four of my seams and made the seam even smaller. So I gained about a half inch and that made it um, big enough so I didn't have to add another panel or anything. So then I've uh, sealed all my edges by surging it. If you don't have a serger, just zigzag it. Okay, now we're going to turn it right side out. And wait, i got a couple places to clip right here where my serger sewed it together. Where's it at? Right here. Okay, so turn it right side out. Now we're going to top stitch each one of the seams. And that's going to give it a nice finished tailored look to where it doesn't look homemade. Um,
Okay, so right here I've top stitched all my seams and you just like open up your seam and then sew really close to your to the edge of your seam and, and fold over your um, uh, seam to one side to the you want to push it over to the right and then uh, stitch to the right so you're you're wanting to stitch top stitch on top of that um, fold in the back you're gonna fold that <laughs> seam over and then you're just gonna sew really close to the edge I do it like about an eighth of an inch away and that just catches it and this is what it looks like um, top stitched I don't know if it's focusing or not it's top stitched it gives it a nice finished look now we want to fix the bottom of the skirt because it has a little bit of a pointy part and we could um, hem that and leave it a little bit pointed and that would be perfectly fine it would give it a little bit of an uneven hem which I like an uneven bottom but I am going to try adding a ruffle to the bottom of this <clears throat> for a really cool look that Amy found on Pinterest. So I'm wanting to round mine off and make it nice and round at the bottom in anticipation of putting that um, ruffle on the bottom. So you just take every point, I don't know if you can kind of see it there, and then just kind of round, round it off. See how I did that? Just kind of like a nice, natural, just spread out each little corner there. And so, since I sewed together six panels, that means I'm going to, I should have um, seven corners. So I just did two of them. So that's two. three, six, well, I guess there was six. So now see my bottom is kind of nice and rounded. It's all sort of, I don't have the point on it anymore. So now I want to zigzag the end of my skirt and I want to zigzag the top of my skirt and that's to seal off both edges before we put our, um, well one thing you could do up here instead of zigzagging the top where we're going to put that elastic in is you could fold it over once just a little bit and then fold it over again like I showed y'all and then we're gonna put that elastic in there so that's one way you could do it okay <clears throat> so after I zigzagged or surged the edge of the top I folded it over and I folded it over about an inch inch and a half and stitched it down and then I inserted my elastic in it um, like I showed y'all how to do in the pajama video. So if you can't remember how to do that, go back and watch the pajama video about how to put the piece of elastic in and that, that's how I did it. Okay, so now the bottom has been surged or zigzagged and it's ready to hem. So since it's uh, zigzagged or surged, all you're going to do is just fold it over a little bit and stitch it down. You're going to sew really close to the edge there. And then you're going to have you're going to have one that looks like the one we done in class like this. See how I zigzagged it and then stitched it. Um, and so a zigzag is not as it doesn't seal off the edge as good as surging um, but I mean it's going to work for what you need but you'll just have to after a couple washes you'll have to keep trimming the uh, strings until it quits um, fraying. Once it reaches the zigzag, it'll stop fraying. Okay, so you're done. If 
you want to stop there, you're done. Now, like I said, Amy showed me a tutorial on Pinterest that basically had this design and then at the bottom they added a couple of layers of ruffle and it made it floor length and it made it really elegant looking so I wanted to try that so there's a lot of variations you can do with this pattern another thing that I had considered doing was taking like this this is a pair of jeans and I cut it off below the pocket and if it's puffy right here um, just um, unstitch it pull out the stitch in a little bit and then lay it uh, pull it over to where it lays flat and top stitch it do that in the front and the back with the crotch seam because see the crotch is made to go in between the legs so it'll be kind of pokey like that and you can't really use it as a skirt so you want to just pull that stitching apart and then lay it flat and top stitch it down to where you got this nice flat jean top then instead of putting the elastic in the top of this you could have just sewed that on there and it was sort of made a skirt like that like we've seen in the tutorials as well uh, or i like to sew the uh, fabric underneath and then let the jean edge fray and trim it uh, after a few washes and it's got a nice frayed edge right there so that's one thing you could do with this skirt pattern and see then it would be sort of floor length that would be really pretty uh, but like I was I was gonna try her ideal so I went ahead and put the elastic in the top so it would be a waist and so now I'm gonna put those ruffles on the bottom and here's how I'm gonna do it I just took my list of leftover fabric and I cut it in strips and then I sewed all the strips together. So I've just got a big long strip. Six inches is how wide I cut it. You can make it bigger, you can make it longer. I think right now it's really popular to have a, a long ruffle. So you might wanna do an eight to 10 inch strip. But th I just had to use what was left over of my fabric. And I started out with um, two yards. So this was all that was left. So I had to do a six inch strip. So. I'm just going to take here on the bottom of my skirt and I serge the edges. If you don't have a serger, you're going to zigzag the edges of your strip before you start. And then I would, I could sew it on flat, but in the tutorial she gathers it and it's a really good look. So I'm going to gather that as I sew. And I actually thought about leaving leaving the surged edge showing. I've seen that done since this is a silky fabric and I don't really want it to bunch. Um, so I was trying to decide about whether or not I wanted to... I guess I'll, you know, because you can uh, leave a surged edge showing but I'll do it the proper way, so to speak. And so I'm going to um, make a hem on both sides of my strip and then we'll come back and we'll attach it to the skirt. Okay, so what I got here is I got my strip of fabric and I got it hemmed on both ends. And, and now I'm gonna attach it to my skirt here so I've got the bottom of the skirt stuck in the machine and I am but I'm wanting to make a ruffle lock so I'm not just sewing it on flat I'm wanting to gather it so I'm just like sewing an inch or so and then I'm folding it over to make a gather And I'm sewing another inch or two. Then I fold it over. Oh, you can't see my hand was in the way. Okay. So I'm folding it over like that. See how I made a little fold? And I'm, I'm wanting to give it a... You can make a ruffle by stitching along the edge and then pulling 
the back thread like doing it with a real loose stitch and then pulling the back thread and it will gather on the thread and that's how you're the way you're supposed to do it but i've always not had the patience to do them that way so i'm sort of making mine as i go so like i said i'm folding it over see how i just folded it over a little bit and then i'm stitching not on the edge i'm not stitching on the edge like i do sometimes i'm stitching about uh Mm, I'm going to say three-eighths, a half inch would be even better from the edge and attaching it to the skirt. So see how I'm sewing over that fold. So I'm going to sew about an inch or so. And then here I'm going to make me another fold. Let me see if I can do it without getting my everything in the way. Okay. I made another fold there. I'm checking underneath to see how far I'm sewing on top. And there I go. I'm sewing the ruffle. So let's see what I've done so far. Let's sort of see what it looks like. See if it's the look that I'm going for here. Okay, so here we've got my ruffle that I'm I want to go back that I'm attaching to the bottom of the skirt. So this is sort of what it's looking like so far. So I think that'll work. And it's not exactly the same look as if I gathered it on a string, but it'll work good enough for me. Um, so I'm going to do that all the way around the bottom of the skirt. See how we've, let me go out. So see, I've got the bottom of the skirt here. And then I'm attaching this piece of stripping to the bottom. Folding it over, stitching, folding it over, stitching. Now I'm, it's going to take me a little while. I'm going to go all the way around the bottom of the skirt. I'm going to see how that looks. And then I'm going to go back and add a double layer, another, if I have enough, another strip. Okay, let's do that and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is kind of what the skirt looked like when I got done, which is really cute. It's really kind of feminine and stuff. But I only had enough strip to do one layer of ruffle because of it being, let's see if I can show a little bit how it hangs. Yeah, let me see if I can get away from the table enough for you to see. There we go. Um, one strip because of the, uh, just one ruffle. I really wanted it to be a double ruffle. And this also is really bulky because of how I gathered it. So, I got to take this ruffle all the way off. And I'm going to show you all how to do a slight ruffle, which is what I should have done in the first place. And, uh, and we'll see if we can get by with that. Okay, now. Let's go back and make a gradual ruffle the right way, and we'll see if we can uh, do it do it like that. All right. So to make a gradual ruffle, what you'll do is you turn your setting on your machine. Let me raise it up here so you can see it. Right here where it says tension, not stitch width, but tension. Normally you sew, or on my machine, you sew like at a five or a six for a proper balance tension. You want to go down as low as you can to almost. Go down to a one. And what that's going to do is going to make a really loose stitch on top, which is what we want because we're going to be able to pull it and gather the ruffle. So see, we just kind of start out like this. Sew it on there. And I measured, and the tail of the skirt was 90 inches around. Well, I have 220 inches of stripping. So, to do two layers of ruffle, that means I gotta gather one layer. Then the second layer has to go, um, hmm, 
I could I'm trying to think how I could do it. I could just overlap it. Anyways, I'll think about that in a minute. Well, let me get this together. And I may stop. I'm going to stop about right there. You don't do any back stitching when you're doing this because you, you want your strings to be free and clear. Okay, so this is, I, I did it about two, two and a half feet, maybe even three feet. So you take that top string. Well, let me get back down here where you can see. Take that top string right there. And hold on to it. Separate it from the bottom string. And then just start pulling. See that thread is really, really loose. Because we, we did it with only a tension of one. And just start gathering the fabric a little bit. And you can do it as loose or as much of a ruffle as you want. And you just ruffle it up. And then work it out. Slide the gathers down. Slide them down. Because I'm going to have to do a very, very slight gather because I don't have enough fabric. Which I guess I could go back to the store and get another piece, which is what I might have to do. But I didn't want my skirt to look bunchy anyways. I feel like I'm too old or it's extra fancy. Uh, like for a wedding or something and I just want to wear it to church so I don't want it to be like super ruffly. Okay, so see that's a very soft gather instead of the pleated one I had before. And let's see, go down to the other end of where my string was. Do the same thing until I meet back, which you can do it all on one side. You just have to be careful not to pull your string out because remember we didn't do any back stitching so that string is loose in there so I'm pulling that top string making gathers now I'm working it down I'm working back to where I stopped on the other one and there let's work us in some more a few more gathers work it out and there I go see I've got a section about like that now I could sew that onto my skirt and then do like another three foot section. And then I'd have to do about three sections and I'd get all the way around at the bottom. But I got to do some math here to figure out how much I can gather the ruffle and have enough left since I'm like running out of fabric. So let me think about that, work on that for a little bit, and then I'll come back and we'll sew on our ruffle. Okay, so I determined that I could have about that much of a gather which is not very much in my strip. So we're gonna go and attach it to the skirt. We're gonna try this again. So I've put my skirt on there and I'm just laying it on top. Now, um, I gotta change back my tension to normal, which for me is a six. So I'm changing my tension back to a six. And now I'm just going to, I'm not gonna pull this. I'm just gonna, you know, this part I want nice and flat, the skirt underneath, but this ruffle, I'm just sewing over the top of my ever so slight gathers there. And it's gonna, it's gonna sew that gather onto the skirt. See, I don't want to pull it because I'll pull the gathers out. So I'm just sewing across and see there it's wanting to bunch up on me. I mean, you're going to be sewing across it, so it's going to be making little uh, puckered places as it sews down, but you just don't want the fabric to um, fold over itself or anything. I, I mean, the top. So I'm just sewing it on to the end of where, see there I've got a piece of the fabrics folding. I want it together, but I don't want it to wad up to where it's folded down on itself. And 
almost to the end. This is not going to be a super precise, like, you know, your gathers are not going to be uniform. They're going to be, um, some of them are going to be slight. Some of them are going to be a little tighter. It gives a nice, I'll show you what it looks like when I get to the end here, okay. There's to the end of the part that we puckered or gathered earlier. So I'm going to sew that all the way into the end of that string there. Now I want to back stitch because we're attaching that ruffle there. So let's take it off here and see what it looks like. Okay, so see that's a much softer gather than what I had going on before. And I guess that's what I'll have to do because I don't have enough material to do a thick gather the way I was doing it by hand. So now, so I sewed that section on and I measured and it was, it was uh, roughly two and a half feet was about how long I did. So now I'm just gonna take my strip again and do exactly what I did before and I'm starting, uh, you know, where it's not attached. I go back to my tension up here on top of my machine. So up here. Go back up here, turn it down to a one, make a loose stitch, and then I'm going to go back and just sew along the edge here for another two and a half feet, or however, whatever you feel comfortable doing. If you want to do 12 inches at a time, then do 12 inches at a time. If you want to do you know, half of it at a time. So the bottom of my skirt was 90 inches. If you want to do 45 inches at a time, then you can do that and just work on your gathers. Okay. Let's see how much I got. Uh, probably about the same. So I'm going to stop there. Here I take my string, my top string here, and just gathering the fabric once again on that string. Just pulling and it's making it pucker up. Just sliding it down on the string. See how it's, see I'm gonna go back and push it down on the string. And let's, then work it, working it down, because I got, you know, several inches that I got to push those puckers down. All right, I'm going to do that and keep going around the skirt until we get done. Okay, so here <clears throat> I've added the second layer of rust ruffle. So we've got our original pattern, and then I did one layer of ruffle, and then the second layer of ruffle. And right here where I ended, <clears throat> instead of just sewing them together because if you can see that instead of sewing them together I just brought it up and twirled it around in a rose looking thing and then just took needle and thread and attached it there <clears throat> so let me pull back and see if you can see what it looks like hanging up it does flare out um quite a bit so once again like we talked about it before I wished I had done it with a more slinky fabric. Um, this is sort of a satin. It has a little bit of stiffness to it. So maybe a little much for me. I don't know. It comes across as almost more like a party type skirt um, or a wedding. And I sort of was hoping it would be low key enough for church, but I don't know. That may be a little too much. Um, but anyways, that's a, something you can do to make it a more fancy fishtail skirt.